Hello darlings and welcome uh, for my Finnabar Creative Team member uh, video moments or how to um, um, introduce this video to you. Uh, I have um, an on ongoing um, journal process, a journaling process at hand. Um, I am turning this vintage book uh, into an art journal and uh, maybe you already notice what my problem is, you see, uh, the real leather um, spine of the book um, gives color quite effectively uh, while I try to do something about it. I have tried to wipe it and so on and so on and so on. And then I decided I have to do something about it before I continue because I am going to ruin everything inside because of this. So I thought, why not um, show you once again <laughs> how Emilia um, process is um, done. I'm wiping my fing fingers clean with a baby wipe. I mean, um, once again, I have no idea what's going to happen. I haven't bought that. Uh, it's a fascinating uh, part of creative process, don't you think? So I have just um, decided that I am going to uh, make this um, cover something grayish, bluish grey, like a stormy cloud a sky or really, really um, dark seaside um, colouring, you know, when the thunder is rolling in and so on. Um, and I picked just a few embellishments and now I'm about to start, um, but I think um, first of all I'm going to use gesso for all of it. The book is really uh, in a good condition and I think it should hold um, in one piece, but I just um, sorry um, thinking um, while I go sorry let's change the plan to secure the spine I am going to use some tissue paper first all over the place because I love it. I'm using soft material. Um, I love how the Finiber uh, tissue paper uh, gives you a wonderfully um, controlled effect of texture. Mm. but only if you um, control it first a bit. I mean, I um, know, I do know that um, usually people use these wonderful uh, tissue papers as they are, uh, precious uh, decoration pieces. Uh, and leave them visible, but I do adore the effect they make when you use them in this way and then prime them with gesso and do 
uh, anything you want on top because it um, somehow makes the paints and everything run so smoothly on the buffet and the paints acts really nicely. I don't st um, know if you can see how the color leaks from the page, so I need to clean my brush a bit. You see there is already uh, brown stains in there. I I think it's much easier to handle the uh, other sides when this one's um, dried. I know you might think that uh, it's a real shame that I'm growing up perfectly beautiful and a precious vintage book but I do happen to have um, more like um, maybe 40 or 50 of these and I have uh, used lots of these um, just as they are and only uh, secured the spines and um, the beautiful colors with only soft material but um, this one I thought needs something more and hence Okay, let's see if I can control it a bit. I know I could um, uh, do only the upper cover, the front cover, sorry, <laughs> thinking uh, in a bit uh, crafty way at the moment. Um, uh, I could uh, do the front cover cover only, but I have learned that um, it's 
quite difficult to um, be able to repeat some color mixes and atmosphere fear or or something um, later on if you create only the front cover and then try, uh, or the back cover and then come back later for the other one and they nearly um, always um, kind of look different and not being part of the same book. If I stop in the middle, so that's why I have learned to do the whole thing in one go. Just to make sure that uh, when I hold the book in my hands, um, it won't actually be visible that I have stopped in the middle. Well, I think it's rather quick process. And I think I'm going to start with the front cover and then I'll, I can do the back, um, back, back cover later. And I don't need to maybe record the process because you have already seen what happens. Okay, now I put this... Um, much out um, aside and honestly it really needs to be <laughs> it really needs to be uh, dry before I put it on the table I think my um, Prior um, is uh, in need of a vacation or something because it really is uh, behaving weirdly, weirdly these days. you can see I'm rather used to this manhandling of beautiful vintage books but as I said I have already made lots of beautiful brown ones been a weird day today. Uh, it's uh, either raining really hard and thundering loudly or then it's um, clear skies and beautiful sunshine and then the next minute it's um, pouring rain again. I think we are going to have a thunderstorm soon again.
it's dry enough. <laughs> Actually, usually at this point, uh, when I am applying a gesso and priming the project, any project, um, where I have put only a uh, tissue paper. Uh, it's the pro um, process part when I really need to get myself going. Um, again, because I do adore this effect. I think it could be uh, beautiful as it is, like this. Um, These two paper are uh, coloring and uh, just a tiny bit of uh, the design um, shining through and the patterns of uh, crevices and nooks and uh, crumbles. It's beautiful. leaking through okay. and I'm just uh, quickly doing this I'll uh, do the inside covers later uh, when I really know what's going to be inside the book so that the colors um, go nicely together because I want the edges of the covers to be the same color the texture covers are so that's why I need to add just a hint of gesso in there you could maybe add some uh, lace for the spine or anything really mm, fabric um, even uh, molds if you wish but I'm going to lay let it be like this. Okay. Lead onto my gesso. I already see that I have four button to take my Everybody chill. So, okay, now I have the tough decision of choosing from the new Finnever um, stencils. I um, made it from six to two, but now I need to. Because these are, are my favorites. Okay, I love them all, but for this project, these are my favorites, and I think I am going to use this one. Um, white uh, modeling paste. So we 
showing you. Modeling paste and then a knife, palette knife. And here we go. I have managed to um, bend a bit um, the stencil when I first time um, cleaned it, um, and I was in a hurry and didn't concentrate properly, and that was. It in a water um, you don't want to uh, leave any um, stencil with uh, modeling paste or any paste to dry as they are uh, but preferably um, clean them immediately I'm trying to blend uh, the edges a bit Um, so I have here um, a tin when, or where there is water and I put a stencil there in water and I'll rinse it later. Okay, so thus far, um, tissue paper attached with soft matte gel and then uh, primed with gesso and then uh, stencil with modeling paste and now when this is dry completely dry because i don't want my um, beautiful stencil patterns to get ruined um, When this is dry, I will attach my decorations on top. But it needs to cool down a bit. good enough. I thought I would simply uh, put this in here and then see what's going to happen next. And I'm using heavy body gel. Uh, this isn't completely dry yet so I need to be careful but I thought I could add this one already on top and let it start drying and getting stuck. Uh, this is a finnaber mold I think was it uh, something frames, grungy frames or something and I have used resin and for an allergic person like me, um, I really recommend using um, rubber clothes or something, uh, even after they are the resin is uh, dry because uh, my fingers start tingling and itching already, handling it um, that long. Uh, so I don't know about you, but um, better to be safe than sorry. So I clean my fingers 
immediately. Okay, now while this is uh, drying, I can start um, testing what I want on top. I took this one because I thought that if I want something uh, fluffy in there, but I don't. Instead, I think what I want in here uh, is this in here. I have made one looking um, a bit like this, but um, and I loved it, but let's see uh, what happens if I if I put some Should I put these? But uh, there is this problem that um, if I do a really um, thick composition in here, when I try to open the book, it's rather um, it's rather difficult. So that's why I am inclining towards. something um, quite thin uh, these mm. sorry lost my thought again. Uh, these tiny little uh, seashells are from a uh, summer vacation. We yeah, have just come home, came home um, last week and I really like the idea of using using these, but sorry, this is this really is a thinking process. No, I'll take this off because uh, they will take ages to. Uh, dry and they will also make uh, the cover quite thick so I'm cleaning and adding the uh, dragonfly on top because sometimes simplicity is the best thing you can do. I'll put these aside so that I have just a bit more room for the actual project. Heavy body gel. This one. Uh, and now I am hoping the tiny little dragonfly will hold fast.
Okay. Now I need a heavy gesso for the frame because I want it to be Sized press somewhere uh, today. Again, if you know me, you know uh, this is my style of uh, crafting and making the videos. I do not usually. Let's see if uh, I can do it uh, or will do it now, but usually I do not uh, fast forward the process at all because you know crafting doesn't happen in fast forward mode especially um, when you are crafting like me and not planning ahead um, and having no um, you know um, I, I never have um, so-called first draft or um, rehearsal uh, version I just <laughs> start doing something and go with it and you can if you want just fast forward this process and see what happens uh, next If you are in a hurry, I think this uh, simple um, composition, um, the simplest there possibly can be, um, uh, it really goes well with beautiful stencil pattern and um, kind of complements in each other okay and now uh, it's our time to get the paints No idea if I'm going to use it, but uh, here it is. Uh, pitch block. Uh, dark chocolate. And snow white. And I'm just thinking that maybe at this point um, I will add just a hint of a mini art stones. But I have learned from my uh, previous mistakes and I use a chart that I have already ruined <laughs> with using at these mini art stones. Turns. 
not much. Just a hint. Like this. Okay. We have our stones done. stones aren't uh, really visible at the moment in here uh, you can see them properly but when um, when the painting process starts um, you get to see the effect they make with just a tiny little a bit of gesso on top just to make sure they um, react the way the rest of the cover does. The mini art stones kind of create a tiny little um, dimensional effect. Um, really, um, how to say, gentle one, without much fush. So, uh, take you, you a beautiful contrasting effect when the paint kind of hit. Uh, it and start making shadows and highlights. Again, I need to make sure that uh, the mixture of top material, um, mini art stones and gesso are completely dry before I uh, start painting. Otherwise, they will just um, start moving with my brush and um, get off. From there. Okay. I'll put this tiny one aside. And as you can see, I have a large brush and I mix, mix just a hint. color in there to see what happens. I want it warmer and lighter. So while it's still wet, I blend it 
immediately with a, with a uh, bit of uh, white so that it's only a hint of color in there. And I go around the fray so that it can't kind of blend in. Okay. This was um, um, you can't call it a primary layer because um, that was gesso, but maybe uh, this was the uh, background and base for uh, anything coming next. Uh, I do have a habit of adding layers whether they be in paper form uh, when I'm doing art journal pages or then <laughs> with paints maybe because I have always loved um, painting with um, oils and as you know that happens in layers so that's why I always think in layers. Just a quick um, background check kind of thing because I um, now had um, just um, perfect amount of the same paint mixture left so now they are really going to be the same color at least the background yes it's drying okay if you know me, you know that uh, it uh, definitely cannot be this easy. It just <laughs> can't because uh, it doesn't look old enough. So what I'm doing now is adding um, layer of dark mixture on the edges like I always do and with a baby wipe and a sprayer or a mist or whatever you want to call it Suihkepullo if you are finished um, I make sure that most of the paint comes off, but uh, that there will be something in there. Hint. 
more. the same in here okay now I uh, do the same with kind of all the edges so to speak in here this brings the frame really lovely into view I'm multitasking. I'm trying to. Get some color. Into the frame too. Usually, um, uh, do uh, completely the other way around, meaning that I I usually uh, do the actual uh, art journal first, and then only afterwards when I have finished it. Uh, is the point where I start decorating the cover mm, so that they are perfect match and uh, the kind of message I'm uh, trying to uh, get through from the pages of the book or art journal um, is um, echoing also from the cover but this time well, it now needs to be something beautifully, mystically um, sea themed. Now, just a hint of liquid acrylics on top. I just um, Try to make room for my palette. Let's clean the brush. Okay. So, burn sienna. Okay. I have my 
manage to pluck it somehow. And just a hint of amber mm, so that okay what have I done? Um, I like the mixture of burnt sienna and amber because uh, burnt sienna is really warm and amber is slightly maybe um, a hint of green tinting uh, brown so uh, together they, um, with black they give you a rather authentic windage look kind of colouring again I do the same thing I just did This gives you um, just a um, tiny bit of warmer tones than the impasto paints, and that's why I do like so much um, to add a hint of liquid acrylics. Um, as the finishing touch and now you can start um, seeing the effect of those minimal amount of mini art tones in there and um, the tissue paper Okay, I think I could continue this forever and ever and ever fine-tuning it, but at some point I would be overdoing it. I want it to be light, but not too light. And, um, Aged, but not too aged. So, I'll do the back cover later, so... You don't need to follow it unnecessarily through. But I want a hint of black in there. Power that doesn't uh, say anything, but it whispers in volumes, I think, about a journey. 
into mist. In the waves, or by the waves, or under the waves, <laughs> or across the stormy sky. And uh, the new ochre, I think this might be trust. The thing needed. Uh, with, 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 uh, not white girl, but winded silk. This is my all time favorite. So underneath, ochre, on top, windy chilk. Mm. For a gentle glow. And then here and there. You won't be actually seeing much of it when it's there, but it gives a beautiful glow for the cover. And I think I already. This part, so okay. Now, at some point, I might add a word clipping or a label or something in here that says something about uh, what's um, going to be inside the book. But at the moment, I can't because I don't know what's uh, going in there. But I can add just a hint of white. Paint on top. So here it is. I think um, this might become a book of whispers. It's a new. Uh, Finber stencil. I can show you which one. Stones and uh, machinery. Uh, with the tissue paper and just a two pieces of embellishments make. Quite um, um, how to say it? Understate, understatedly, or something. Um, somehow light, lightly. Um, I am trying to find a word, but maybe you can feel it <laughs> for me. Uh, I love it. 
and uh, it took actually uh, right about one hour to make it so not quite bad I'm um, continuing with the background so uh, it's a bit of cheating to say but mm, if I hadn't been talking um, I would already have finished it so it's not um, an impossibly uh, long project but I'm really thankful for you if you have managed to uh, um, tag along uh, the whole time and uh, have been keeping me company so thank you darling and I wish you beautiful uh, wish bearing moments see you again bye bye